Welcome, everybody, to episode 18 of the Cinephile Rehab Podcast. Welcome back. Today is Cinco de Mayo, everybody. Yep, Cinco de Mayo on Epicene 18 I think that stands for the fifth of mayonnaise. <laughs> That's what it translates to. <laughs> A fifth of mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? My name's Phil, everybody. And who are you? Julia. And who am I? That's for you to find out. I'm Ryan. We've got some antics to get into today. Some uh, hijinks, as usual. Yeah. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Here we go. We got Smash Date Mary up first. Yet again. <sighs> it brings me so much joy. About to get gay. <laughs> it brings me so much joy. Mm-hmm. So I'm stupid proud of myself for the way I set this up this time. Um, yeah, you'll see. Okay. <clears throat> so this time you're going to pick a number and we'll reveal the names that are under said number. Mm. Each of you get two. There are no women in this one. I wanted to keep it gay. <laughs> okay. Okay. LGBT friendly. Got, got yep. fancy with this. I did. I'm so proud of myself, y'all. It took me a hot minute, but I figured it out and it's super fancy. What do you see? All right. Okay. Let the Who healing begin. So let's let Philip choose. Philip, uh, choose a number. Give me number three. <clears throat> Yeah, Dale. Number three. Dermot Mulroney? Yep. I don't know who that is. Really? Yeah. (laughs) Steve Buscemi and John Cusack. Okay. So Dermot Mulroney is in, let me see what movie you would know him more for. And I'll show you his picture. Do you know who he is, Ron? I know you do. I feel like I know who he is. Well, I know the other two, so. I want to see his face. Mm. Dermot. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. (laughs) Didn't know his name. And he's most famous for, like, a bunch of. 90s stuff. He was on Friends for a while. Mm Mm-hmm. Anyway. Okay. Okay, those are your choices. Um, Smash Cusack, Mary Buscemi. And I guess date Mulroney. So yeah, Buscemi's a hero. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I feel like he would be. He's wholesome, man. Super fun. He is a hero. Y'all, y'all know the story about <clears throat> him going back to his old uh, fire hall. I guess what are they called? Fire station. Fire station. <laughs> Excuse me. He went to his old fire station in New York City after they, 9-11. You're talking to help. about the ones with the big red trucks, right? <laughs> no, I'm fucking yes, retarded. <laughs> Good choices. Good choices. Okay, Ryan, pick a number. Um, let's go with lucky number seven. Ooh. I think this this is the haughty one. Yeah. Let's see here. You've got Josh Brolin, Josh Hartnett, and Ewan McGregor. I would definitely marry Ewan. Okay. Yeah. It's fucking Obi Wan. Come on. Yeah. He's, Come on. He's now. super hot. And he can and he can sing. He can sing. It's a double whammy. Have you ever not, never watched Moulin Rouge? Oh, you're right. He is yeah, in Moulin he's Rouge. Freaking, Damn. Oh God, it's so uh, good. Now I would smash Josh Hartnett. He is smashable. Okay. He's still smashable. He okay. was smashable back back in the day. Yeah. And he has still aged smashable. very well, I have okay. to say. And then I would date Josh Brolin. Gonna date Thanos? I would like to remember him as the guy that shot Sean Penn in milk. <laughs> or do you want to remember him as, what was it? Country for Old Men? No. Is it Judah Hex? Is that the name of it? Or Jonas Hex? Oh, I know Did what you're talking about. Did y'all remember that movie? It's a shitty action movie. Never so saw it, it. It's a comic. Yeah. yeah, it was made off a comic. You've never seen that? Never seen it. It's oh. a shitty CGI action movie. It's, it is. It's really yeah. bad. It's really bad. However, it has Josh Brolin in it. Mm. Or do you, or the Goonies. the Goonies. I was going to say, or do you want him as, as Bran in the Goonies? Because he was hot. I would like no country for old men. Josh Brolin? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Need that macho man. Yeah. <laughs> you, okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> Phil, what were you going to say, Julia? Please let us know. Um, 
Letting that one go. Give me number five, Bob. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer to be, to be Alex Trebek. All right. Now I'm just going to throw this one out here. Go ahead and list them. And I'll Woody throw it Harrelson, out there. Tom mm-hmm. Hiddleston, and Owen Wilson. So word on the street is Woody's packing. Yeah. <laughs> So you got to take that into account if you're smashing. I mean, that shit might hurt. Uh, Oh, my God. I want to spend as little time as possible with Owen Wilson. So I think I'll just smash him. Wow. He'd get get so fucking annoying with that shit. (laughs) Just the way he talks, man. But I wonder if that's just for the movies and stuff, or is he really, does he really... I've never Talk seen like interviews with Luke Wells yeah. or um, Owen. Oh, it's Owen. I, for some reason, yeah. I was sitting there thinking Luke. No, it's not. Oh, it's not Luke Wilson. It's, his, yeah. it's your wow guy, though. Wow. Yeah. I think okay. I'd. I think I'd marry Tom Hiddleston, and he'd take you out to nice dinners and stuff. You know. Yeah. Like he'd have a weekly date night. You know, yeah. like <laughs> like a couple that's been married for forty years. You know. <laughs> and then I'd date Woody Harrelson because. He'd be fun. We'd go out to bars and because he's packing, you know, he's scared. Smoke weed, yeah, smoke weed, and <laughs> maybe some meth might fall into the pipe. But, Dude, you know. him, him and Matthew McConaughey need to figure out if they're brothers or not. Have y'all heard? I've the, heard of that. Yeah, that his mom had a fling. Yeah, shit with Woody's dad around know. the time that. Uh, and Woody's dad's the dude that shot that judge back in the day. Yep. Damn. Yep. Well, he's got a lot of history. His dad actually claimed that he's the one that killed uh, Kennedy. Right. A lot of crazy I didn't shit. know that. Okay. Ron? Um, let's go with number six. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Speaking of Matthew McConaughey. Jake Gyllenhaal, Matthew McConaughey, and Marky Mark Wahlberg. This one's, I think this one's tough. Um, I would marry Matthew McConaughey. I think so too. For obvious reasons. <laughs> um, and what reasons are those, Ryan? He's just fucking awesome. He, he truly is awesome. I think so too. You'd be happy with Matthew McConaughey. He'd be, and you'd walk in the living room right. and he's just butt ass naked playing the bongos. Yep. Like, come on and sit down and smoke this jay with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh,. Shit. I'd smash Jake Gyllenhaal because I don't want to go on a Yeah, one and done with yeah, him. Just right? one and <laughs> He's done. a one and done. Yeah, yeah I kind of, of agree shit. with that. Um <clears throat> and you know, he's he's a taker, according to Brokeback, Brokeback Mountain, Mountain. So I know. I'm aware. Uh and then <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to date Mark Wahlberg. Marky Mark. At least so you could, you'll get fed like with him. some good burgers. Speaking of those, mm-hmm. Philip tried them in Vegas. How was the Wall Wall Burger? Or it whatever was it's good, called? but they put six pounds of lettuce on the motherfucker. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, Mark or the other ones, I forget their names, but um, <clears throat> cool it with the lettuce, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's out of control, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Feel it. Uh, give me number nine. Let's see, Clooney, Sean Bean, and James McAvoy. Hmm. I think Sean Bean would be awesome. Hmm. The Mary. Uh huh. Yeah. I like him a lot. Was it, Clooney was unmarried for like the longest time, right? He's yes. married now, right? He's married now and has kids, yeah. Yeah, so he, he's got, like, commit, commitment issues or something. So okay. So that's just a date, I think. Okay. Uh, marry Sean Bean and then smash McAvoy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Solid. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with number 10. Michael Fassbender, Jeremy Renner, and Clive Owen. Ooh. <laughs> Um, I think I could rattle this one off pretty quick. I'd marry Jeremy Renner. He seems like a good guy. Cool dude, yeah. Um, and he's a badass. He survived a snow plow he running, sure did. Him, running him over. <laughs> uh, he sure did. Um, I'd smash uh, Clive Owen. Okay. Handsome man. Handsome man. 
He is a YouTuber. I man. am gay. <laughs> and then I would date Michael Fassbender. Fassbender. Yep. Yep. Okay. He seems like a... Dateable like guy. A good guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, all the British guys will be fun dates, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him how much I just loved his work in Twelve Years a Slave. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, anyway, I love that movie, Julia. Philip. Tragic. Let's go with number one. <clears throat> all right, Christian Bale, Chris Pratt, or Russell Crowe. I'm not a fan of any of these, to be honest. Oh. Ah <laughs> uh, shit. You're not a fan uh, of Russell Crowe? I think he's I the know. best he, out of the three. I feel like he would beat me or some shit. You know? <laughs> would he be? Would well, he be he, the? He'd be abusive or something. I don't know. I ain't trying <laughs> to get into all that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't have any proof. I, don't know. Just, I, I just get that feeling. You know. <laughs> Christian Bale and his American Psycho. Yeah, it's like. <sighs> and I can picture you not liking Chris Pratt. Unfortunately, no, he would get so fucking annoying. So that's a smash then, because that's a one and done. I guess, yeah. <laughs> that rules one out. It's smash Pratt, I guess. Okay. Fuck. I guess I'd marry Christian Bale. He seems like the most normal of the two. So. Okay. I guess I'd date Russell Crowe. Okay. But yeah, I'm not a fan of any of those. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like the movies except Pratt, but, you know, whatever. Let's okay. go with number eight. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. Very easy. Ethan Hawke, Liam Neeson, and or Brendan Fraser. Date Ethan. Okay. Marry Brendan. Okay. Obvious reasons. Obvious reasons. And smash. Wait. Hang on. Oh. No. I'm going to have to recant that. <laughs> I would smash Ethan Hawke okay. from the 90s. Okay. <laughs> from the and 90s. And uh, date Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. Yeah. I would marry Brendan for obvious reasons as well because he's just yeah. a great guy. He's a, a phenomenal human being. Right. Okay. Last two. Philip. Uh, four. Four. All right. Robert Pattinson, Greg Kinnear, Eric Bana. Hmm. Now I would like to know if it's Eric Bana from Chopped, Chopper. I mean, or Eric Bana from Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> This is a good one. Okay. Um, hmm. I think Smash Banna, just because I don't know much about him. Okay. Uh, ah. Greg Kinnear would get boring, so I would just date him. And then okay. I, I think I'd marry uh Pattinson. Oh, Rob? Yeah. At least he's Batman, you know. True. Yeah, at least he's getting... Yeah. You know, Getting very well known within Hollywood. <laughs> right. In a good way now. Yeah. So he, he's escaped Twilight. Twilight. Yeah. Uh, Ron, you have two. Last I'm going to go with number 11. No, shut up. <laughs> number two. <clears throat> Oof. This All one right. is crazy. Yeah. It's cause... Miles Teller, Shia LaBeouf, mm. or in Orlando Bloom. Um, Mary Orlando. Okay. Uh shit I'd smash Miles Teller for obvious reasons and then I, I would just go on one date with Shy because more than one he's going to end up beating me <laughs> don't say that about him I'm just kidding <laughs> why wouldn't you date Shy? Uh, more than once I mean he, he's got he, he's going to get better but he's going through a rough patch right now true True. Okay. Apparently, uh, Mia Goth, his his girl. He'd been his girl for a hot minute. Apparently, she fucking threatened somebody on the uh, set of Maxine, her new film coming out. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, it, uh, the dude took the report to TMZ and... Oh, my God. I have to uh, read that. I did not know that. Crazy shit. Crazy shit. Well, that concludes our opener of... Smash date Mary Gay. <laughs> yep. Uh, Happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Whoop, sorry. I jumped the gun. What are you there. doing? Jesus. I jumped the gun. I'm sorry. Jesus. I hit the button too many times. All righty. All right, Ron, announce our next All announce our spotlight. 
amazing spotlight is going to be none other than John C. Riley. There you go. And from the picture there, it reminds me of one of my favorite Adult Swim shows from back <laughs> in the day. Shit, what's the name of that show again? Tim um, and Eric. Yeah, Tim and Eric. Yes. And then they, they gave him a spinoff at some point. Then, yeah, they, they did. did. They did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he has his own his own show. And fun fact, the C in his name means Christopher. So, oh, really? Yes. Okay. If, for I wonder why he know. chose to like it's a weird represent thing. his name that way. That's a weird thing that happens when... Some celebrities are known by their full name. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anya Taylor-Joy, like Gl Chloe Grace Moritz, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Their, their middle name gets incorporated somehow. Ja like, Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. Yeah. It's because it's just badass. <laughs> right. His name's I wonder badass. if it was him because if you think about it, John Riley is this kind of a name. Yeah. Probably. Or there's. How many other John Rileys yeah, in Hollywood? There's, there's probably six yeah, million so he John probably Rileys. Put so. the C in there too. Maybe that's why. Make Could his be. name stand out. Could be. Okay. Yeah. What is y'all's favorite John C. Riley performance? Hmm. He's been, he's had a lot of good supporting roles, mm -hmm. but my favorite where he's the lead is uh, Walk Hard. The Dewey Cox. Yeah. yeah, it's such a bad movie, yeah. but it's I love so it. I hilarious. Think it's a good movie. I think it's a great movie, actually. Jack I, White playing fucking Elvis. It's karate. It is the <sighs> damn funniest thing I've ever seen, Dude, though. It's if you think about it relatively, you know what I'm saying. It's hard to compare the two movies because one's a comedy, one's a drama. Mm -hmm. But I think in their respective fields, it's on the same level as Walk the Line. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that movie. It's so ridiculous. Which it's a parody of Walk the Line, but yeah. you know, and several other music films. But yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a yeah. great movie. It's, what about you, Julia? Um, no, I agree. I agree with Walk Hard. Walk Hard, y'all's yeah. favorite John C. Riley. Yeah, what, as he's the star, because as right. Philip yeah. said, I have a list of supporting roles, but I really did like him a lot in Chicago. Did you guys watch yep. Chicago? It's he the was the only so Oscar nomination so he's ever received in yeah. his wow. career. Yeah, which he was fantastic in that film. So yeah, rightfully he was deserved. so good. Um, so my favorite in this, he was a lead in this. Uh, Hard Eight. Not seen oh, it. Oh, is that a Paul Thomas Paul Anderson's Tom. very first, first film? Yeah. Huh. I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. If you think about it, John C. Riley, he, he likes John C. Riley just as much as he likes Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Yeah. He was in a lot of PTAs, like early shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He ended up being more of a supporting character in those. Yeah. The latter. But yeah. I don't know. Have y'all. Have y'all ever seen Hard Eight? No. I haven't. It's a pretty damn good movie. We'll have to pretty good movie. Check it out. He uh he gets taken he's like this just down on his luck kind of dude. And this professional gambler um just sees him sitting outside of a diner one day and tells him to come to Vegas with him. Oh, helps yeah. him become a professional gambler himself. Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson. That's another one, Samuel L. Jackson, known by. Yep. Is my phone yeah. playing that right now? Yeah. My phone is playing that right now. You got it on the airplay, bro. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> it's supposed so to be snooker. No, there's no snooker right We're now. We're missing the championship, bro. Dude. Sorry <laughs> to our British fans I was say, out there. Use the iPad if you need to. Yeah. Um, so we have to talk about Talladega Nights. Of course. For yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Because. Yeah. Shake and bake. Shake and <laughs> Magic man. <laughs> Shake and bake is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I freaking love that movie. I, I don't, I just, there's just some movies that are just bad that are just good at the same time. And right. That's one of them. It has one of, he has one of my be favorite scenes in that movie when um, Ricky gets in the, the wreck and mm -hmm. he thinks he's on fire and he's stripping Naked, and he's mm -hmm. obviously not on fire. Right. It cuts to his character, and he's like, "Oh my god, y'all put my friend out! He's on fire!" <laughs> like he's just as retarded right. as Will Ferrell's character. Right. You know, uh, that scene is based on something that actually happened at a racetrack. Really, yeah. really? It's a. Uh, it's called like a methanol fire. I think it's nearly invisible. Like you can only see the fumes. You can't see actual flames. 
So Interesting. Should we call yeah. our yeah. boots on the ground correspondent <laughs> Billy Wolf? Billy probably know about it. He's like, hell yeah, man. I was out there that day, dude. Yeah. I was drunk as shit, man. Yeah. But I- <laughs> yeah, it happened in like the mid 80s, I think. Uh, I think it was like Formula One. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Like a car came into a pit and like the, the driver gets out just just like the movie flailing and shit and oh my god nobody knows what the fuck is wrong because they can't see the flames you know they just think he's just yeah. <laughs> just having a spat yeah. oh shit someone oh, finally gets the idea to bring the fire extinguisher over <laughs> and put them out yeah. god dang yeah. wow. so is it yeah. just like in your head no it's a real oh, fire okay. it's just the way the chemicals are you can't see the flames like, weird yeah <laughs> stupid weird it, it's like it's like heat you can only see like heat waves you know like on yeah. a hot day when you're looking at like yeah, a, yeah. a road yeah, yeah. or something you know that's so strange yeah that's wild yeah that's strange <laughs> and i guess he was like flailing around so much it was hard to see so damn yeah wow tragic i think everyone survived but you know <laughs> i think <laughs> Weird. What were we talking about? A Talladega Nights. Oh, okay. <laughs> invisible fire scene. Invisible yeah, fire the, the invisible fire scene. Yeah. Now, Ricky, don't you <laughs> stick that knife in your leg. <laughs> um, yeah. Philip, what is another movie of his that you like? Um, let's see. Uh, I've been thinking about The Lobster lately. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one that has to stick his hand in the toaster, right? right. For yeah. breaking the rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a Yorgos Lanthimos film, and if you've seen Poor Things, it's a very different kind of film. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, that's another one that just makes you feel uncomfortable the entire time, the entire I fucking movie. Hate, and I hate movies like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't I mind it. gore, yeah. and I don't mind, but the uncomfortable movies, yeah. ugh. It's like everything feels like off rhythm, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah, and. Yeah, it's uh, that's the way poor things made me feel. It just made me feel uncomfortable right. the whole yeah. movie. But there's there's so much humor, right, in that uncomfortable yeah. like feeling. Oh yeah. yeah, it's like nervous laughter. You yes. Know? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like and you can't and you can't peel your eyes away from it. Like you can't look away. Yeah, you want to, yeah. but you can't. You're just he, stuck. Yeah. Like he does a lot a lot of long <laughs> takes, so he kind of forces you to have to sit through. Yeah, yeah. all this uncomfortable. Yeah, shit. it's like the scene you mentioned where he puts his hand. He has to put his hand in the toaster. It's yeah. like I think he. <laughs> Excuse me. He's either uh, out of frame or out of focus, and you just hear it, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. And while you're watching Colin Farrell, like, eat breakfast. Or yeah, he's just yeah. sitting yeah. there just chilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that movie's crazy. <laughs> what about Gangs of New York? Ooh, of course. Yeah. Yes. Of course. It's a great one. Yeah, he was it's a great one. That. He does play a pretty prominent role in that. So. Yeah. Yes. I he's think so the, too. he's yeah. the one that becomes the. Uh, the police captain, right? Yeah. Yep. And he's, which is, I mean, he has a big role in a Scorsese film, which are usually star studded, you mm-hmm. know, like, so that's, that's good. I think that goes under the radar as one of Scorsese's best. Cause that on a, on that scale, mm-hmm. that was a grand scale of a movie right there. Yeah. Right? People say it's like, it's not his style or whatever, but it is. Yes. It's just a different time. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's still about gangsters. It's still about the mafia and yeah. organized crime. And, you yeah. know, it's just nobody had cars yet. <laughs> this chair's just going to collapse on it, me <laughs> mid-show. You're one the one day. who wanted to sit in it. Well, all that's right. what she said. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Shut up. Um, and we can't, for, of course, we can't forget Dr. Steve. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Stephen no. Brule. Yeah, yeah. From, do you, and there's a movie called Bag Boy. I haven't seen that. Which is about that character. Really? Hmm. Yeah, it is a movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're back. We well, had a little uh, <laughs> spill there. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> <But> <laughs> we were talking about Bag Boy. Yeah. <laughs> the movie about with Doc, Doctor Steve. Mm, okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't watched it. it, watch it. It's pretty funny. And one of my favorite supporting roles of him as well is uh, Magnolia. Uh, yeah. Oh, Thomas yeah. Anderson as I the cop not. trying to find yeah. love. And he mm-hmm. finds love with mm-hmm. the, the drug addict. Yeah. I forgot about that movie. What's his name in Boogie Nights? Yeah. Uh, he, um, Reed? Yeah, something uh, like that. Oh, damn it. Fuck. 
Yeah, he was good in his movie porn nights. star name. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's Reed something, or his last name's Reed. Something's Reed. I remember that. Um, Hang on, stand but yeah, by. Yeah, it's stand funny. By. I love that movie. Reed Rothschild. <laughs> I knew it was Reed something. What a name. Uh, alongside Dirk Diggler. <laughs> he is great in that film, You don't too. talk about yeah. Dirk Diggler. And then mm-hmm. he was in We Need to Talk About Kevin. Right. Which yep, we he, talked he sure about. Was. I think we talked about that when we talked right. about that movie. He sure was. Yep. Um, and then we can't forget uh, the Sherlock and Holmes film. That <laughs> oh, my God. What, but what was it called? Holmes, Holmes and, and Watson. Holmes and Watson. Yeah. yeah. Bless I him. didn't watch that garbage. Bless him. Yeah. It, like, ruined everybody's relationship with each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our, I None never of watched those guys have worked together since then. So. Really? Yeah. Why you don't yeah. make dumb fucking comedies like right. that. Yeah. They need, they need to go back to old days, you know. Yeah. Of what? Where they, had, where they had megaphones on set. No, we're not. <laughs> he has a megaphone, guys. I am so sorry. All right. Let's act like I'm on the set of Hang Wizard on. of Oz. Oh, God. This Dude, is going to be loud. Yeah. Yep. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the set of the Wizard of Oz. We're about to do the Yellow Brook Road scene. <laughs> no, we're cutting that. Philip, cut that out. <laughs> cut the phone out. You're cut. Everybody be quiet. This has to get posted today. I'm not cutting anything. You have to use it or you're going to cut that. We're not cutting anything out of this, Julia. Yeah. We're not cutting anything. Leave it then. <laughs> 9-11 was a tragedy. <laughs> Philip, you're going to cut that out. <laughs> All right, we got to move on. We got to move on. <laughs> um, I also, one of my favorite roles of him, but he was a voice actor, was he played Ralph in Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph. Which is, a, I love that animated movie. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, it was a pretty good one. <laughs> I think that might be the last, um, the last animated film I've watched. Actually, was Wreck It Ralph. Mm-hmm. It was good, and then he was in the Guardian, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep, yep. And that concludes the list of movies that I prominent. He played. He was in, an important role. He played in the Hours. The hours. I don't think I've watched the Hours. Yes, you have with Nicole Kidman. Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have seen that. He plays uh, Julianne Moore's husband. I remember. We need to talk about that maybe one day. The Next. Hours. Okay. John C. Riley. You know him. Watch him. Love him. You know what? I'm glad none of us fucking said that dumb fucking movie, Step Brothers. No. Oh, I have it on my list. Well, but, I'm glad you didn't fucking say it. But. But I didn't say it because I was waiting for one of you guys to talk either about how it's dumb or. Yeah, that movie sucks. That movie fucking sucks. Again, the only the only thing I like is the drum set scene. Like, that was it. You like to see somebody put their balls. It in. was just the way he said it. It was so funny. I'm that, balls. That, I'm that, that was literally the only funny Act part like I like. a bunch of fucking children. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys don't. Well, we're not. That is that, all. We're not rubbing our ball sack yeah, on the pool not, table right we're now. Not, we're not retarded. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Oh, moving on. We're going to talk about sci-fi movies because this is all going down a rabbit hole pretty mm-hmm. fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about sci-fi, which I love sci-fi movies. Yep. Now, sci-fi. If it's good sci-fi, I like the good sci-fi, not the. Not the CGI sci-fi. Like no. I, I want I, Sharknado is a great example of sci-fi. Right. Oh, that is garbage. Those <laughs> stupid sci- made for sci-fi. Correct. Right. Films. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't know. Now I do like Sharknado. I'm not gonna lie. However, All right, those types of movies. <laughs> uh, but I really do like a good sci-fi. Like a really I do truly. As well. I say we go ahead and get the obvious one out of the way because it is what paved the way for all science fiction films, and that so, is 2001 A Space Odyssey. I think my list is not going to be like y'all's list because I did not list any of the obvious ones. Mm-hmm. Maybe a couple, but for the most part, I try to, because I know we're all going to talk about aliens and 2001 A Space Odyssey and all of the more traditional sci-fi, but I picked a couple of different ones, mm-hmm. different ones. Okay. 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 So, you want me to start? I'm going to start with one. So, one of my favorite sci fi movies of all time is Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. That is a fantastic Khan. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is probably on my top five sci fi movies, if not 
number one. It's definitely it's my favorite. Probably the best out of the um, all the films they made for Star Trek. And I feel like that best represents sci-fi because it is it's it's just pure sci-fi. Right. Philip, what's one on your list? Um, this is one I discovered recently. <clears throat> I haven't watched it yet, but. <laughs> it's called Battle Beyond the Stars. Came out in 1980, and the reason that got me interested in it is because it stars a woman with large oh, chesticles. God. Nice, and they have her in very skimpy like armor. <laughs> positive, positive review we're having. Yes, yes, that's that's all. <laughs> Well, that will lead me to mine. Go. Yeah. Total recall because there is a three, three breasted woman. Three tittied woman. <laughs> yes, there is. But it's actually just. I a freaking great love that movie. Movie. And yeah. I would throw this one in there just because it's the same director, uh, Robocop. I like Robocop a lot. Robocop you know, Ro- Ro- fucked me up as a kid. Robocop gets a lot of hate. I don't. I do not I like understand. Robocop. I don't understand. I know. Why. I, don't, I don't either. But I, I, in my research and just. Talking to people, a lot of people really shit on that movie. It's a I love that perfect movie. representation of society. It does have some cheese to it, but oh you yeah, know, but it's, it's, a, it's yeah. that eighties cheese. 80s. Yeah. Every, everything was cheesy, yeah, you know? over the top. Yeah, Julia. So another one of my absolute favorite sci-fi movies of all time is The Fly. And yes. that movie fucked me up as a kid. <laughs> yes. I'm not gonna lie, that movie fucked me up as a kid. Oh, uh, when he's. Transforming the it's, actual fly and uh, her uh, was it her boss comes over and he spits the acid on his arm yeah. and the arm <laughs> dissolves. Yeah, that fucked me. It scared the oh. shit out of me as a kid. <laughs> I remember bird. watching it with my dad and I'm like, I was <laughs> terrified of that movie. You remember yeah. when Goosebumps ripped it off like with a plant? Yes. Oh, the the yeah. dad that's a. Scientists yeah. down yeah. in the ba- don't go don't go into the basement. Something like that. Yeah. That's what it yeah. was. Yeah. Yes, that was my favorite. <laughs> that one and the werewolf one. We yeah. should have an episode devoted to goosebumps. Goosebumps. Yeah. Yes. Well, then we're gonna have Emmy as a guest <laughs> as a guest on that segment because she knows everything about goosebumps. <laughs> nice. She freaking loves. She's watched the old ones and the new ones. The old ones are the yeah the yeah. best. She's watched all of them. Yeah. Um. What's another phenomenal sci-fi movie? My first one was a joke, by the way. <laughs> you're, a, you're a fucking liar. Out. You're a fucking liar. <laughs> my, num- my number one all time is Blade Runner. Like, yeah. yeah, easy. I didn't Blade even, the original, that. I didn't even write it down because I knew you guys would definitely. talk about it. The original director's cut. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people thought it was overrated at the time, but I think it's a great, great sci-fi film. Is uh, District 9. I, I was going to write that one down because I do like it. I think that yeah. that was Charlto Copley. That was his first ever acting uh, role ever in his life. Hmm. I don't think he even did like TV at the time. Hmm. And so it just, it, it brings that realism to his character. Right. That is a heartbreaking movie. Yeah. Yeah, it is. We're supposed to be getting District 10. Yeah. It's been point. a rumor for a long time. Apparently, it's in production now. Oh, okay. Apparently. We'll see. Julia. So, and this is another movie that I feel like it's shit on, but I fucking love it. And I like the book. That's the reason why I have it on here. Is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm. And I know that it gets shit on, (laughs) but I love the book so much that I do enjoy the movie. I enjoyed it when I was a child. Yeah. I like The book is really good, though. (laughs) I think, I think, I don't, I don't think it was the worst. I think there's plenty of more that were worse than that. And don't you me, butthole. <laughs> what did I do to you? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I purred at you like a cat? No, I said, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I feel like sci-fi and horror have the most trash, like, in their, in oh, their genres, you know? Hands down. Like, there's there's good ones, definitely. But it's surrounded by trash. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta dig out the the shit to get to the diamonds, you know, yeah. or whatever. Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. What about Looper? 
Fuck that movie. You don't like that movie? No. Really? Yeah. I liked wow. it. I didn't even watch it because it looked fucking stupid. Oh, I like you've it. You've got to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I like you've that movie a lot. You've got to watch it, dude. I already know the twist. I absolutely right. love that. Like, for Bruce Willis during that time when he was making shit movies, yeah. that ended up being a really good performance by him. <laughs> I'm serious. I, you've got to watch that. If you still hate it, then your 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 argument is completely valid. I, it, I think it's really but good. But you can't rip it until you see it because it is pretty amazing. I don't know about it. It's pretty amazing. Like you're going to have to watch it. Movie. You're going to have to watch it, dude. Do you know, <laughs> why would you not watch it? Is it Joseph Gordon Levitt? It's everything. Like, I don't like everything. I don't like time travel. I don't like but bullshit. Uh, like the that, whole, but the idea to the time travel is what's awesome. I, mean, to I already it. know the twist. Like, But you got to watch it. On know. a technical level, it's know. so good. It's a good Emily Blunt performance. That was the first Emily Blunt movie I'd ever seen. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Phil, didn't, all right. Didn't I'm going to wait for a movie he seen. I'm like, no, no, no. That's fine. Nope. Nope. It just doesn't appeal to me. I watched the trailer and it looked gay. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel about it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> all right. Where are we at now? Looper. Do you have any? Anymore. Um, I have a couple more. Ex Machina. Okay. I figured that you guys would talk about that. Mm-hmm. And I think some that's other one ones. of the better ones. And I would say one of my favorite sci fi films from Spielberg is Minority Report. I was going to put mm. that on my list. I figured I figured you would probably say I that. I really enjoy Minority I, Report. I liked it too. Very cool concept. <clears throat> I did put a super obvious one on here of Predator. Yeah. Predator's good. Get to the Jabba. Yeah. I, I feel like it's super. Super obvious yeah. choice of Jesse Ventura with the fucking minigun, right? I yeah. Got, I ain't got time to bleed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out here in the jungle <laughs> fighting monkeys. <laughs> I once was a governor. <laughs> Philip, do you have any Mind other that control. you like? <laughs> fucking conspiracy theorist. True. Um, let me think. Um, Hmm. Journey to the center of the earth with the rock. <laughs> you trash Damn. looper, you throw that one out. There's about and to be murder committed. That was a joke, by the way. And then he follows up with Journey to the Center of the Earth with the Rock. Just a piss rhino. <laughs> I don't um, know. Um, so I have an oldie, like I feel like it's also kind of what it, it was probably what year was 2001 A Space Odyssey, 70s? 68. Yeah. Okay. So the day the Earth Earth stood still was probably one of the, because that was in like the 50s, wasn't it? Right. Was probably one of the best best introduction to sci fi movies. Yeah. They made a remake with Keanu and it sucked ass. Yeah, it was fucking. I have not seen a remake of that. Thank God. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful when I don't see remakes of movies because then I feel like I have even more appreciation for the original right because that one yeah. was really good it was good for its time mm-hmm. like yeah. to to see where it can um go i also have donnie darko which i did like that movie i don't care if you guys yeah, hate it i like donnie it. darko it was a good was here's a good one, one for you okay what? cone heads dude. <laughs> 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 you don't like cone heads <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get right all riled up because he's like, you're gonna shit on Looper, but you're then you're gonna say Coneheads. <laughs> you don't like Coneheads, dude? Absolutely <laughs> fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need to smoke a fucking cigarette after this one. God damn. The last one I have on my list for movies is Twelve Monkeys. Ooh, Ooh. made me laugh. <laughs> Brad Pitt. Um, Best part Do you like of that Twelve movie. Monkeys, Philip? Never seen it. Okay, it's good. You will one like that it. one that I actually <laughs> like is a uh, uh, Galaxy Quest. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. is that the Tim Allen one? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. With uh, Alan Rickman and, and Sigourney Weaver. If y'all yeah. rewatch yeah. it, you'll see a bunch of moments where they dubbed over them saying the word "fuck." That was supposed yeah. to be a rated R film. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that. Which it would have made that movie. A million right. times better than <laughs> yeah. it already is. Yeah. yeah, it probably wouldn't be so obscure if it was our, you know. Yes, because <clears throat> not a lot of people have seen that movie. Actually, <coughs> it's that is one of my favorite Sam Rockwell movies. Yeah, 
I like Galaxy Quest. And that is like Tim Allen did so good in that movie. Mm-hmm. So good in that movie. It's a good yeah. pick right there. Yeah. And one I would like to say, and I will thank my father for showing me this one, is the OG Westworld from the 70s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With Yul Brenner playing the man in black and yep. uh, James Brolin. God, that's good. Yeah. Such a good it film. It is such a good movie. Such a good film. I do love that one a lot, too. Yeah. Another one I actually like is uh, The Fifth Element. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. Bruce Willis. Is that Bruce and, Willis to you? Yeah. 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 And that. it's the girl from the Resident Evil movies, right? Mila yeah. Jovich. Yeah. yeah. And then she, uh, Chris Tucker. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. when I first saw that movie, I, his character was annoying as fuck, but then he like grew on me. You know? Oh yeah, Chris, <laughs> Chris Tucker's the shit, dude. Right. Rush Hour, yeah. they need a they need to pull a Rush Hour four out their right. ass yeah. somehow. There, there's been know, talks dude. about it. Jackie Chan's like ninety years old though. Like, well, and no, he doesn't his, do his own stunts his anymore. His body's yeah. ninety years yeah. old. Yeah. I think he's only like seventy. Yeah, his body's yeah. like a thousand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Like. Um, I like They Live with Rowdy Rowdy Piper. <laughs> I came here for two things, to kick ass and chew bubble yeah, gum. I'm all and I'm all gum. out of bubble gum. <laughs> yeah. I actually do like that one. It's, oh, yeah. It's so good. I want to give a nod to sci-fi TV, though. Oh, God. They're, why are you oh God? Oh, God. Let's <laughs> hear no, it. No, Seriously. There are some great sci-fi TV series. Like what? Doctor Who. No comment. Because you you've never watched it. It never appealed to me. Because you've never watched it. (laughs) It never appealed to me. If you have watched Doctor Who. Weren't you just giving me shit about this a second ago? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Philip. If well, I've, never, I've got no. certain tastes no. and shows you, and Doctor Oh, Hayden. yeah, funny how that works, you know? <laughs> you get, it is karma. You, you so, never watched Doctor Who, have you? No. Exactly. So, so. Yeah, but he's not shitting on it. Yeah. Well, I'm not shitting on it. So, I'm just saying it never appealed like to it. me. If you, a, yeah. So in order for you to appreciate it, you start with David Tennant, and then you can, and then you can kind of work your way backwards a little bit, but... It's some of the best TV I have ever seen. Who's the guy with the few, the huge forehead? Um, Matt Smith? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you start with David Tennant, you would appreciate David he's Tennant was a, probably the strongest. He's got doctor. a five head, dude. <laughs> Leave Matt Smith alone. He does, but though. <laughs> doctor Who, again, is from the 50s. And yeah. it kind of paved the way for sci-fi. It's like sci-fi movies. James Bond, I yeah. guess. Like, gotcha. It's amazing. Yeah. You're an ass. <laughs> I just, you know, I don't watch and shit. Have, and have you, it's not shit. I'm no, I'm just saying oh. stuff in general. Oh. I don't watch a lot of have, stuff. Did you, have, did you guys watch the X Files when it came out? No, I watched some episodes. It's so good. It's what so I've, fucking good. Uh, what I've heard about the X Files is the first seasons are good, and then it takes a shit. It does. Yeah. It like with most most shows, it mm-hmm. always it gets weaker as the seasons go yeah. on. But the first couple. Three, four seasons are so good in terms of, because again, we're talking about sci-fi, like, and how, and its portrayal of sci-fi is phenomenal. Like, yeah. I don't care what you guys say, because you haven't watched it. Um, did you guys watch Firefly? There's only one nah. season. No. With Nathan Fillion? No. Nah. Nah. It's so good. It's noted. You like Nathan Why would I Fillion? watch it if I there's do, only I one season? Like well, because that one season. So we thought there was going to be more seasons, but then they canceled it. And right. it's been a big deal ever since it got canceled. Like it went, it was kind of like when, did you guys watch Roswell? No. Okay. <laughs> so you guys are not true sci-fi people then because these. I mean, I watch sci-fi movies. I'm not a yeah, big sci-fi TV guy. Right. I'm talking I'm about not, just sci-fi in general. I'm not watching sci-fi in NBC. Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. <laughs> Is what that kind, on your list over there? What kind of language was that? Because it's nerd. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> That's nerd talk. And you're not a nerd. Yes, oh my hi. Anyway, I'm not watching really sci-fi good. on NBC or some shit. You know? Yeah. Like, no. That and that this was not on NBC. Well, whatever. Anyway, Fox or T- <laughs> TNT. Yeah. But Firefly was really good. <laughs> yeah. If you ever need something to watch and you want to watch a, a, a like a series, yeah. 
came on Firefly after Monday really Night Raw. You know? So you have not watched any sci-fi TV shows at all? Uh, I don't mm. think so. You didn't watch Twin Peaks, I mean, nothing? No. My dad would watch Star Trek when it was on. Yeah. Star Trek is great, too. I mean, but I didn't make a point to watch it myself. Yeah. You know? I, well, I'm disappointed. I've seen a few Star Trek episodes. I yeah. love I love sci-fi as a genre it, as a mm. whole, so I've embraced all but of But a lot them. of these shows, like, that you're naming are a lot older during a time where I wouldn't like, I don't know. Yeah, but you watch movies. It appeals to that generation at the time. Well, Doctor Who is still on. It's like if you try to watch Twin Peaks now to get started on it, it feels so much like a soap opera. Whereas if you watched it back in the day, that was the top shit on TV. It It was a soap opera back in the day though. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But everything was a soap opera then. True. That's true. That's, fucking okay. Bold and the Beautiful or Young and the Restless <laughs> is still going. That old fucking bag Victor is still on it. No, I think Victor finally died. No, he comes Dave. back to life somehow <laughs> every Dave, single in time. Days of our lives, he does. He's in Young and the Restless. Or Young and the Restless? Excuse me. I was talking. To, I was thinking about yes, another guy. That old fossil is still kicking. You are messed up. Anyway. Appreciate sci-fi TV as well. And we left out a bunch of obvious ones because we've talked, talked about, about them, them right. yes. a lot. So, of course, you know, we've mentioned Alien, Aliens, and, yeah. those sorts of movies. Terminator. T, yeah, T2. Yeah. I think um, we've mentioned The Thing in every episode. So. Yeah, Correct. <laughs> the Thing in every episode. Like, uh, we, did not me- we didn't mention Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes and that how much of a masterpiece that film is. <laughs> Our next topic. <laughs> Let me get a drink real quick no. since I fucking spilt mine. Proceed. <laughs> he did spill his. Um, so I just got a little, this is just a little bit of statistical data. Um, I put movie statistics and shit, but I got just some, some random things that were um, is uh, as of 2021, but then I got two pieces about independent movies, and I found them to be very interesting. I feel like this. I know we've talked about it in the past about how mainstream companies. Um, it's hard for independent um, filmmakers to branch out past the big your Marvels and your Disney's and your. Um, and your and your big companies on how it's ho- so hard for them to get ahead of them, and I found some data about them. So um, mm. this is just some regular movie stuff. Um, this is as of twenty twenty one that the film industry is currently worth twenty five point eight billion dollars, which is Christ. so much money. That sounds low um, to me, actually. The box office market as of twenty twenty one reached five point nine billion in twenty twenty two, which was up thirty two percent from twenty twenty one. Well, we had COVID at that point, so. Yeah. Well, this is after COVID. No, 21 COVID was still on. Yeah, but it wasn't as, 2020 is when you weren't allowed to do anything anywhere. Right. 2021, everything started opening back up. Right. Um, The average person sees approximately six movies um, and 844 million tickets have been sold in 2022. You had a uh, grammatical... Um, error going on there Shut approximately up. six movie theaters oh <laughs> would oh. you have a stroke type in this oh maybe sorry Shut <laughs> up. it means sees approximately six movies in theaters is i forgot the word in uh, china has the largest movie industry in the world followed by the u.s and then followed by japan oh so today. so china is the largest movie industry which i hmm. i didn't i didn't think it would be they probably got propaganda that, and shit running 24 7. So. I thought that was. Yeah. Never would have known. Fucking that. commies. So in 2021, <laughs> the number of moviegoers and tickets sold was higher for men at 53% than women at 47%. So more men go to the movies than women. <laughs> and probably it's just single dudes trying to get away from their wives or something. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Married dudes, I mean. Um, so look at this. Um, this is a chart about. So this this is talking about independent movies. How many independent movies are produced each year? And wait till you see this data. Over five hundred. So. Yeah. There's no way it could be in the thousands. Indie films are is the yellow part of this, mm-hmm. and your studio filmmaking is the purple. Look how many more independent movies are made than just in the studio, but they but they don't get. 
per, they don't get into theaters or they don't get yeah. recognized. In 2019, 863 independent movies were produced. And I bet you absolutely out of insane. that is probably like 50% of them probably even made it past go. Oh, yeah. 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 Which is so sad because I I feel like I've watched more independent movies that I like than studio movies 100%. Dude, I think the future of filmmaking is creating your own platform. I you agree. Know, you can do it for free on the fucking internet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. AI can do it for you now. Yeah, like, fuck. Like, what do you, why are you even bothering with those fucking pedophiles and rapists in Hollywood? Right. And just, you know. Independent movies is thing. where it's at. Yeah, like. Like, it's where it's at. And obviously 2020, it definitely slumped, but that was due to COVID. I mean, it's right. like, yeah, you're, you're probably going to take a monetary hit, but you could do that in the theaters too, you know? Yeah. yeah. If you're putting it in theaters, you got to spend another million just to distribute it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. If you spend, let's say a hundred thousand, like, and you, and you, uh, put it on YouTube, you don't have to spend another hundred thousand to distribute it. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Like you're, right. You don't have to sink yourself. You don't have to gamble as hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I agree. Like but it, I found that to be stupid. Interesting that, and I bet, I bet you, I bet you it's less than 50% even make it past go. Yeah. And that's sad because yeah. I feel like there's a lot of talented people. Now we know that people will break through that wall because, you know, mm. but that's just crazy. Um, and what do you think is the most profitable genre of independent movies is? See if you can guess the top one. Uh, whatever they classify superhero movies as. No. Independent. We're talking about independent oh, films. Independent. Independent oh, oh. movies. Which which genre do you think is the most profitable? Uh, horror. Got yeah, it. Yeah. So horror is at forty three percent. That has to be like by sheer volume, though. Like, yeah. cause I feel like there are way more horror into indie films than any other genre. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's like, that's what this is saying. They're like, like I, if you look at this, adventure is thirty nine percent, but. I wanted to show you. You can speak into the mic, by the way. Oh, I wanted. To sh- well, sorry, because I'm trying to read this. Oh, I can read it on here now. Yeah, if you I want, couldn't, yeah. I couldn't read that over there. Um, if you want to, I mean. only 12 percent are sports movies. <laughs> Shut up, Brian! I punch you. You're the spilt drink all over my floor. Uh, 12 percent are sport movies, so there's not a lot of independent sports movies being right. made. <laughs> but horror. Is number one followed by adventure at thirty nine percent and romance at thirty five percent. Yeah. So adventure indie films. I, re- I, I I think they mean like action movies, but oh, uh, when I think adventure, oh, I no, think of like over here. I think of like Lord of the Rings and shit. You know. Oh, like may, I guess there must be a lot well, of a some lot high of those budget out there. shit. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, well, that may be why it's not very. Um, uh, it doesn't pass go because it may not be yeah. great yeah. adventure movies, you know, just things that are made up. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like all indie filmmakers want to do horror, you know, right. For the because most it's, part. I feel like it's the cheapest to do. Yeah. I mean, you can make blood out of what chocolate syrup and red food coloring. Cornstarch. Yeah. And shit, you know? <laughs> like, like I feel like it's, a, it's probably the easiest of uh, genres to produce. The cheapest, right? In my opinion, so yeah, I guess you don't think so. No, it's just I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, think about y'all's finals that d- had a horror spin on it. Yeah. It was. I agree, but you know, you just need a creepy bat lock, bat back lock with a barn and some fake blood, and you can create a whole movie just with that set. Right. Yeah, I just feel like it's the horror genre is already oversaturated. So, you know, just my opinion. I mean, it, it, I mean, it, it for sure is like it, def, it definitely, I see more horror movies than anything come out for sure. Yeah. So I appreciate the indie film maker. That's what I have to say about that. Yeah. It makes me appreciate them a little more. And by that, we mean filmmakers from Indiana, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're so dumb. <laughs> All righty. Oh, Ryan, this is you. We are moving into our main movie, and I suggested a little film called Chopper. 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 I know. It makes you want to have an accent when you say <laughs> <Yes>. it. <laughs> uh, Chopper tells the intense story of Mark 
Chopper Reed, a legendary criminal who wrote his autobiography while serving a jail sentence in prison. His book, From the Inside, upon which the film is based, was a bestseller. Hmm. What did you guys think? Julia? I liked it, but I also like stuff about, I like real stories. So I I enjoyed it. Because it was a real story. Yeah. I thought Phil. it was sick. Like, awesome. Yeah. Did uh, you really like it? I knew, yeah. I knew you. I knew for sure that he was going to like it. Yeah. Uh, I like the, the very first thing you, you see is like uh, creative liberties have been taken with the story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They even changed his name a little bit in the yep. movie. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Uh, what year uh, did it come out, Ron? 2000 and it is directed by Andrew Dominic, who mm-hmm. made uh, the assassination of Jesse James, killing them softly. Blonde, yeah. yeah, you may know him from Blonde, which y'all made a big stink about and then haven't talked about in six months. So, yeah, yeah. well, I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> He's a very visual storyteller, yeah, um, but I'd say this was probably a little less on that, uh, on that level. You know, it was more of a character-driven piece. Yeah, definitely. Where he focused on the man himself. Yeah. And the man himself is acted by Eric Bana. And I think I told y'all that this is one of my favorite performances yeah. of all time. I couldn't believe that Eric Bana was capable of <laughs> is that he, level of acting. Is he Australian? I think he is. I think I he is. No idea. Um, <clears throat> just a complete. This is a pinnacle of trans- transforming your body. Yeah. For a role, um, Eric Bana. A lot of people may know him from the original Hulk in 2003, and this is actually the film that made Ang Lee want to cast Eric Bana as the Hulk. Hmm. Um, he is Australian. Pure is is nice purebred <laughs> purebred uh dango <laughs> ate my baby um <laughs> he uh that's a true story man <laughs> yeah it's a true story man. some sad shit uh, one of my favorite scenes in this movie is when his buddy in jail stabs him yeah and he's just like oh yeah his buddy, he just keeps going on him. He's just like, it's all right, mate. What are you doing, mate? Yeah, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> <laughs> He's just not even, like, phased yeah. by it, dude. And I think that... Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh... You can tell that Mark Reed was definitely a dude that had a uh, rough childhood. Oh, for sure. Because he lacked... He lacked empathy. But then mm-hmm. he would get, imp- like, empathetic right. whenever he would... Yeah. Do something when he like hurt somebody physically. It's yes. kind of when he felt bad. It's yeah. when he feel bad, but he's yeah. one of the most violent people, right? Yeah, ever. Yeah, and I just love, <laughs> I love the way he's able to tell stories to people, mm. in like his own version of the right. story. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did some research a little bit. Okay. Uh, this movie came out before the Bronson film with Tom Hardy. Yep. And I thought those two were very similar. Yes. Like very. Yeah. Almost makes you think, you know? Yes. Like, like I, cause I ended up seeing this after I saw Bronson and it, yeah. it definitely makes you think that yeah. they kind of ripped it off right. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just a tad. Yeah. Yeah. And I like Bronson. It's a good movie. But yeah. Seeing how similar these two films are, it really makes you like, hmm, mm-hmm. it makes you wonder. <laughs> and it might just be the criminal himself. Right. Because Bronson is a real criminal over yeah, there in England. Yeah, yeah. Which his, <laughs> how much of that is really true? Yeah, I know. Because you know, that, <laughs> that movie seems completely yeah. outrageous to happen in real life. Right. I feel like this movie kind of leaves it open to discussion on whether he's telling the truth or not. Yeah, because that's what yeah. he is. He's just a narcissist. Yeah, he's a bullshitter. You he's know? a bullshitter. <laughs> yeah. I love the scene where he just pulls his dick out yeah. on the chick sitting <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, 
I mean, uh, he's like, come on, Mark, put that uh, away, yeah. mate. <laughs> it's like, uh, spoiler alert. He confesses to a murder to these detectives and they straight up don't believe him. Yeah. They don't yeah. believe yeah. him yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I got the bloody gun right here. Yeah. <laughs> he just pulls it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so Great it, film. yeah, it, it's kind of hidden in the subtext a little bit, but I think <clears throat> the movie subtly um, leaves the possibility open that the book was a lie, you know? Right. You yeah. Know? And that goes to the, just mm-hmm. the genius of Andrew Dominic to tell the story like that, you right, know? Right. Like, and I, I don't know if this guy's still alive, so. Uh, he's not. So <laughs> oh, okay. fun fact so about this then. dude, <laughs> he, um, he started having liver failure, I believe. Oh, no. And they were willing to uh, get him a liver transplant. And he said that uh, he doesn't deserve to take a liver from somebody that who really, truly might need it. Oh, shit. Really? So he definitely had a heart towards the end of things. I think yeah. he died in 2011, 2012, something like right. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Check this dude out because he was a loony. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, that, that's crazy. That first uh <clears throat> spoiler. First uh duty bodies in the stabs him in the neck oh, and right, shit. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I love the brutality in this film. It, oh yeah. I, I love that in prison films because like that's how brutal fucking prison gets, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You get fucking shanked with a one inch razor blade all the time, dude. <laughs> right. Yeah. In the fucking neck. In the neck. You get yeah. stabbed like fifty times. Yep. <laughs> it's like poor old uh shit, Whitey Bulger. All oh, right. Got yeah. fucked up with a sock full of padlocks <laughs> at the age of 90 something. Damn. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> they fucked him up. Uh, snitches get stitches, bro. Snitches get stitches. Mm. Remember that, Julia. I will remember that for the rest of my life. <laughs> and they end up in ditches because <clears throat> they be bitches. Chopper, everybody. And you can watch it Chopper. on Peacock if you have a subscription to Peacock, which that's where I watched it at. Or you can rent or buy it on Amazon Prime. Hmm. I highly suggest people to watch it because it is definitely a great performance that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. This is the first time I've seen it. So awesome. All right. Regular shit up here. I'm getting sick of saying this, but fucking like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, comment. Shout out to our one commenter out there. You're a true fucking fan. <laughs> You're not gay, dude. We like you. Um <laughs> Or if you are gay, I mean, we still like you, but um, we got TikTok, Spotify, Instagram, all that jazz, email. Do it. Do it. All right. Later, everybody. Adios.